Rethink personal manufacturing, says Bamboo Lab about their new H2D system. Here I was only just starting to think about personal manufacturing, so slow down, leave some for the rest of us, please. Bamboo Lab have just announced their hotly anticipated and loosely kept secret new product, the H2D, along with a bunch of other new updates, including the new AMS2. So let's talk shop. First up, off the bat, I'm a fan. I think this thing looks sick on surface level, and I'm already thinking about the projects that I could use it for, but there's some questions and maybe some larger societal concerns like should we be encouraging the printing of bike helmets. Before we get into the guts of it though, I'm a video guy more than a 3D printing guy and I love a flashy launch video as much as the next person, but some absolute choices were made with this one. Sure, have the narrator be the machine, talking about how helpful it can be to every member of the Johnson family. Let me show you how they're realizing their personal manufacturing dreams. But why then are they addressing the camera and not the printer? Hey Jane, what's up? I'm all about personalizing my look. Hmm, odd. And I did mention it just before, but I'm pretty sure bike helmets go through some pretty rigorous engineering and testing to meet safety standards in various countries that this is marketed in. Uh, they for sure do in Australia. So it's a pretty bold call by Bamboo Lab to drop this new product video and have the very first example product be a DIY bike helmet. It could be fine though, but I think it is a little too cowboy even for built. But what about the actual product? So if you don't know and haven't watched the video yet, the very flashy announcement video, the H2D is being marketed as an all-in-one personal manufacturing hub. It's still at its core a 3D printer. However, it now has the ability to, if you go for the top spec, to do laser engraving as well as cutting and digital cutting and plotting, so drawing all on the same platform in the same enclosure, which is cool as heck on paper and might be a little less cool in practice, but we'll get to that. So the big talking point is the laser. There's a 10 watt and a 40 watt option for laser engraving and cutting. I know absolutely nothing about laser cutting, although I have been thinking about getting one, but I still know nothing. So take all of this with a huge grain of salt. The launch site says it has a 455 nm, which I assume is nanometer um, laser, and that might be a good spec. Nevertheless, it says the 40 watt laser will cut through 15 mil thick plywood, which ain't too shabby. And I can get my head around that. There's also a whole bunch of AI and cameras and sensors in this thing as well. So apparently you can do some pretty decent uh, laser work like engraving on curved surfaces without the tool head hitting the piece. Um, obviously that's a good thing. Um, I don't know how prevalent that is with other at-home laser cutters. I've only seen people do it with like flat stock for plywood. So that's pretty cool. There's also a rotary attachment for laser engraving uh, on cylinders, which I also think is cool. I can imagine getting like a bunch of blank water bottles or something like that and being able to engrave logos and such on them at home would be great for little merch runs. Uh, the same goes with the cutting tool. I know you can kind of do stuff like this with the Cricut and things like that, uh, but being able to cut out stickers and stuff like that would be great for little merch runs for, you know, YouTube channels about 3D printing and botched designs like built. <laughs> One thing I do think is super cool, which shows up in the little Lady Johnson part of the video where she 3D prints a shoe, is is the bird's eye camera that lines up the print bed, the stock and the cutting path on your computer. Uh, they've used a pretty basic example for this, but I can see how it might work really well for some more complex designs. I think that would be super handy. Cool. I like more AI tools that help us not uh, kind of take the work from us, just help us do the work. As always, the full auto calibration, you don't need to tinker, just sit back and let the machine do the thing, you simpleton, approach that Bamboo Lab takes is right up my alley. All of these tools look hectic on their own and from other manufacturers that have taken a more DIY route, uh, tinker to your heart's content approach, uh, is not my style. But for me personally, I'm loving this like all in one setup, turn it on, just let it go. You don't need an engineering degree or a degree in physics to understand how to work this thing. I know that's not for everyone, but that is for me. I like that. Oh, and we haven't even got to the dual nozzles uh, and also the new AMS too. Um, that's also a filament dryer now, apparently, which is great. I don't have a filament dryer, so I can see how that would be great. I also think I read somewhere that it might be backwards compatible with like the A1. So I could potentially get this new AMS2 system, not the AMS Lite, AMS2 system that is the filament dryer and have that on my A1 if I don't upgrade to this H2D. So with that, having two nozzles that you can switch seamlessly within the print is going to be uh, a bit of a game changer, I think, for multicolored prints, uh, but also for multi-material prints. So like, think about being able to print PLA and PETG running simultaneously to use one as support material for the other, uh, and the other one as print material, for instance. I think that's gonna be great. Um, like, I know we can technically do that now with the AMS, but with the single nozzle, uh, I think with this dual nozzle, it's gonna be much faster, obviously. I, I think though, that's the theory, right? It's also gonna minimize waste. I'm not quite sure how that works because I haven't really done a whole bunch of multi uh, material or multi colored printing because I'm a little bit afraid of all of that poop waste. So maybe this solves that problem as well. In theory, it should minimize waste, right? 
This thing has sensors out the wazoo as well and a bunch of AI tools, like I mentioned before, um, built into it for monitoring your process uh, and common printing problems like nozzle clumping and spaghetti. So gone are the days of returning home and seeing spaghetti all over the place. Um, but I low-key am going to miss all of the nozzle clump monstrosity Reddit posts. I don't know about you. Okay, we get it. This thing is absolutely stacked to the eyeballs with features. What's the catch? Is it the price? No, the price is actually pretty reasonable for what it is. I mean, it's definitely not walking around money, but it's not outlandish. So check out what it is in your own market because I'm sure it'll shift a little bit, but it's not bad. Safety. Well, that's obviously a concern. We've now got lasers in the mix, but it seems that they've thought that through a little bit. There's a bunch of laser protections built in, such as laser safety windows that allow you to allegedly look through the thing without blinding yourself. Um, there's like fire suppression, I think. Uh, it's got like burn proof walls or something. I don't know. You can look at the exact safety specs yourself but it seems like they've put a bit of thought into it. There's also sensors on the doors, so that'll shut off operations if you open it up while the laser's going, for instance. Uh, there's a big old honking safety stop button, uh, which is also a nice touch. But what about air quality though? If you've seen my setup video for the A1, you know that I'm very much in the overkill territory on maintaining a safe working environment. And dude, I'm only working with PLA and not burning wood and plastic or printing ABS and all that kind of fun stuff. Well, they're advertising an optional air purifier, which looks pretty beefy. Uh, that should allow you to vent to the outside world. So that is good to see. No news on the added cost of that though, um, TBC. And there's also an adaptive airflow system in the chamber that changes depending on what kind of task you're doing. So hopefully that will help obviously with your prints, with your laser cutting, with your engraving, with your, you know, whatever else it's doing, it's going to circulate the air in the best way for the print and hopefully the best way for your health. So like I said, this thing looks super cool. It looks legit, but there's really no way we'll know how cool or how legit or how safe and how useful this whole thing is as a package until it's in the hands of people, uh, and more importantly, in the hands of some much smarter people than me who can probably test this thing at home and make YouTube videos out of it and tell me if I should get one or not. And... For us to not just rely on the flashy marketing material from Bamboo Lab, because they're obviously trying to sell the thing but they're selling it well, it looks good. The main thing that I'm skeptical about, and I think I'm justified in this skepticism because I've seen a bunch of Reddit comments that are similar, uh, is that laser cutters produce a ton of particulate. Like if you burn wood, you're producing carbon, it's a known thing, and that particulate has to go somewhere. Uh, I just like to think that it does get sucked out through the air purifier and safely away from you and your house and the rest of the Johnson family. However, I highly doubt that's going to be the case. It would also stink too, right? Like you're burning wood. If you're laser cutting, it's going to stink, not only your house up, but also the work area. So then you go ahead and add a 3D print into that afterwards uh, in the same enclosure. And that's gonna come out with that laser stink on it and probably contaminated by some of the old laser particulate. And how do you clean all of that off with inside the enclosure? Like surely it's similar to an oven, I guess with less fat, but if you burn something in an oven that gets all sooty over the top of it and that stuff's like impossible to get off. I've moved like 13 rental houses at this point. Oven cleaning sucks. So are we gonna have to do a bunch of oven cleaning in this thing? I don't know, answer those questions for me. Are the Johnsons doing all of that cleaning? I don't think so. I'd really like to think that with such a slick operation that Bamboo Lab has, uh, that they've maybe thought all of this through and that it's gonna work perfectly well and we'll have no issues and no one is accidentally gonna burn their house down. Um, but we don't know what we don't know and we don't know what we don't know until we know. So we'll just have to stay tuned and find out. I'm still keen though, this thing looks dope. Um, what do you think? Are you rushing out to buy one? Are you spending all of your Maker World gift cards on it today? Uh, or are you gonna hold out and see what it looks like IRL before we go uh, printing bike helmets together? Oh yeah, and sorry I didn't make anything in this video. This felt like a pretty big announcement within this world. And I'm really keen to see what you guys think. Your comments have been great so far on this channel. Um, so get amongst it. Let me know what you think about this. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, are you skeptical? Are you all in? Let me know. In any case, I'll be back with another built video very shortly.